Hello everybody, welcome back to Rob's Workshop. Today's video we're going to be making these little devils, the drag links. I need four of them. They work in pairs. Uh, one pair for each of the uh, cylinders. Um, that's the horizontal bits there. Con rods which we made in the previous video are connected to the ends of each pair of drag links and obviously as this moves back and forth the drag links as the name suggests drags the expansion link across well, that bit there so first things first um, I'm going to modify this slightly I'm not happy about these being through holes we'll end up with a situation we've got three through holes, there's a through hole in the expansion link, a through hole in a pair of drag links and they're held together with a 7BA nut and bolt like that. Problem is that can come loose in the service so my small change is to make one side with clearance holes and the other side tapped a 7BA so that when uh, I assemble uh, the drag links to the um, expansion link and the con rod, these can screw right through uh, into the, the second part with a lock nut going on the back, like that. I'm going to show you a bit better in the, that drawing there. Yeah, connecting rod, some drag links. Now if they go here like this, like that, there's a drag link either side and a bolt through. So clearance hole on one side, tapped hole on the other side, we screw them together and put the lock nut on the back and that should stop everything falling to pieces when I eventually finish the engine and get it running. Okay first things first, um, get some stock, blow it, mark it up uh, and start changing some holes, get rid of as much as I can of the waste material because there's only a sixteenth left when I'm finished. There's quite a bit of metal to uh, because there'll be nothing left by the time I've finished but anyway here we go let's uh, get over to the mill and start drilling holes Okay, so I found the center of the stock in the y-axis. Um, as you can see, I've blued up the material and put some uh, sanity check marks on where the bosses will be, there and there, and the same for the second part. Um, I've lined up the uh, quill with the center of what will eventually become a boss. Uh, I'm going to drill uh, center center drill first and then drill through number 38 which in old money is 2.6 millimeters or is that new money anyway here we go i just want a very small uh, dimple a guide for the uh, 
number 38 drill. Right, DROs uh, zeroed, we need to move across 1 and 15 sixteenths, which is, um, let me see, 1.9375. Dimple there. Should be enough. We'll change this for the thirty eight drill. the head up a bit I think. Better. And to drill to get my WD-40 and off we go So I'll just flip it end for end um, and drill the other two holes. Right then, lots of chain drilling. I won't film it all because it's too boring. So that's that done. Most of the uh, metal's been removed, thank goodness. Save a bit of work on the uh, for the poor old milling cutter. Uh, next job, of course, is to uh, turn the bosses uh, on both ends. I'll leave them together as a pair on one piece of stock for now and uh, separate them later on to finish the uh, uh, bosses on the inside there. Okay, here we go. Well, here we go again. Uh, more bosses. Got it set up in the rotary table, same as before. I'm just going to go down probably a couple of millimeters and keep bringing the cutter closer to the center of the, work of the uh, rotary table and uh, keep checking until I've got the right uh, boss diameter. Uh, when I've done that, I'll make a note of the DROX reading uh, for the other three bosses that I have to make. So I'll fire up the mill. 
Wally. Check of the diameter. Got a feeling I have miles to go yet. Four five four. Drawing calls for four fifty four. Okay, let's go. Still loads to go. I think I'll cut a bit deeper than that because the uh, calipers may be sitting on the uh, radius right in the corner there. The best wheel in the world, uh, it's not a right angle there. Um, so if your calipers are sitting on the radius, you get a, an oversized reading. So I'll go down a bit deeper and double check again. Okay, I'll just carry on with that until I get the boss to the right diameter and uh, get back to you. So that's one boss done, turned to size and the, uh, the web down to thickness, awfully thin that, it's only a sixteenth, 1.6 millimetres or thereabouts, but uh, it went alright. I was wondering if I'd have issues because of the uh, how thin this uh, bottom part is, but uh, no, it was it was okay. So I've got to repeat this uh, seven more times, and I'll not bother filming that because you'll be totally bored. Um, I'll come back to you when I've cut the uh, the stock into two pieces, and. Uh, will um, machine away the sides because there's quite a bit to come off the sides as well well more later then
Well, I can't believe how long these things took to make. There's hardly any metal left. Quite a lot of machining just to uh, produce these. Now, when I was uh, turning the hand wheel on the rotary table for the millionth time, I set about wondering if I could uh, make these another way. And of course, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I thought, well, I could turn the bosses in the lathe, drill and tap as required, and then silver solder them both to a 16th uh, steel stock of the right width. Um, all well and good. Problem is, you need to make a jig to hold these centers the correct distance apart. Whilst the silver solder in the uh, uh, the, the thin bit in between. Uh, if I'd done that, uh, I suppose I would have saved quite a bit of time, certainly material, but having said that, I would still need to uh, profile these radii here, all four radii on these two bosses. Um, and reduce the width of, of this uh, part here. The boss is a quarter diameter and this as you can see is 3 16 so uh, there's a 30 second of an inch to come off both sides so still a lot of fiddling whether in the mill or filing by hand quite a lot of work just to get the the final uh, profile so would it save time well possibly a bit but material, uh, absolutely, because <laughs> as you can see, there's, uh, there's not much left of these little things. Okay, uh, this is one pair, uh, as you can see, it's tapped here, 7BA, and clearance holes here, number 38, 2.6 mil, thereabouts. And they go together in pairs. I've got the other pair sort of assembled. Um, I'll just move the drawing over so you can see it better. Get the thing in, uh, in shot properly. And there you go. I'll zoom out a bit as well. So, uh, connection rod on the temporary reversing shaft and the other pair of links there. I'll just turn it around to show you how they fit together. The expansion link of course uh, is free to, to slide left and right, my head and astern, uh, which is where this thing comes in. Uh, quite pleased with it, it's, it's worked out quite well. The only issue I've had uh, is with the bolts putting it all together. Um, these, uh, as supplied in the kit, uh, are undersized. These actual bolts are for some other part of the engine, but I just tried them and they're absolutely fine. Uh, it's a plain section. I'll show you one of the wrong ones. They go like that. As a plain section goes through uh, two parts, and it, in my case, it's threaded in the, uh, in the rear part with provision for a lock nut on the back. These are the, the ones that are supplied and they're, well, 7BA outside diameter should be 98 thou. These, if I remember right, are 10, yeah, 10 thou, too small. And I've checked other cal with other calipers, micrometers and uh, so forth, and they're all the same. But the weird thing is that the thread is actually on just about on spec. Oh no, that's undersized as well. 91. Anyway, I've, I've sent the email off to Stuart Turner and hopefully they'll send me a uh, set of four on spec bolts because obviously uh, these are 10 thou uh, undersized. <laughs> I'm going to have 10 thou clearance in these moving parts before I've even finished the engine, which is just not acceptable. So there we go. Um, next thing I'm going to do whilst I'm waiting for the bolts. Oh, uh, one other thing. I'll put a half nut on the back of here. 
because the full nut supplied uh, was scraping against the drag link and the uh, the head of the bolt just looks a bit clunky and it's pretty close to this this side so I'll take a few thou off that and reassemble it and it should be fine um, and I guess that's about it for now next operation I'll be uh, apart from these little fiddly jobs I'm going to pin the uh, two connecting rods to the reversing shaft um, I'll say a few words about the uh, <coughs> slider bracket as they call it get that in shot there you go <coughs> I'll do a separate video for that, uh, incorporating the pinning of the reversing shaft um, to the con rods. So until then, take care and I'll see you around. Bye now.